In this video, we'll talk about hedging. Let's start with an exact definition and then go through an example to explain how it works. A hedge is an investment position intended to offset losses or gains that may be incurred by another instrument. In simple words, that means hedging just means protecting yourself against some sort of effect. We actually already encountered this indirectly in previous videos without a formal definition. For example, in our video about futures, the cookie business owner bought a futures contract to lock in a fixed price for sugar. In other words, the cookie business owner protected themselves against price movements in sugar. Furthermore, there's a strong connection between hedging and arbitrage. Arbitrage essentially means that we buy and sell a product at the same time. Furthermore, we protect, or in other words, hedge ourselves against price movements in the product itself by having a flat position and isolating our edge. To illustrate this, think about the Bitcoin arbitrage example from the previous video. There, we bought Bitcoin in the US and at the same time sold Bitcoin in Japan. This can basically be broken down into buying Bitcoin in the US and then using Japan to hedge our position in another market. This allowed us to basically get a risk-free profit since we could cancel out any price movements in Bitcoin due to the hedge. In case of the ETF arbitrage from the previous video, we bought many different stocks and then immediately sold an each share of the ETF itself to hedge against price changes in those stocks. Here again, our goal was to make money through the opportunity in the order book and we did not want to actually trade any stocks. To solidify this concept, let's consider another scenario. Imagine you're a sophisticated trader with a strong belief that the upcoming release of the new banana phone will be a bigger hit than anticipated. The banana phone company is holding a two-hour presentation to unveil their new product. It starts at 3 p.m. and will end at 5 p.m. Since you're unsure about the exact time when the phone will be showcased, you open a large long position right at the presentation start. Now over the next hour, the stock price plummets, but then finally the phone is revealed and the stock price experiences a small jump. At the end of the day, while your prediction about the phone was correct, you actually still experience an overall loss on your trade. To get to the bottom of this, you further investigate what happened. This investigation reveals that the entire market actually experienced a downturn during the early part of the presentation. This decline had to nothing to do with the banana phone company itself. Instead, it stemmed from an unexpected announcement by the Federal Reserve about significantly raising interest rates in the coming months. As expected, the entire US stock market reacted negatively to this news, and the banana phone company's stock price followed as well. In essence, throughout the two-hour presentation, you were exposed to movements in the broader market and not just the banana phone release. Ideally, you'd like to isolate this exposure and focus solely on price movements directly related to the phone's launch during these two hours. While achieving complete isolation is very difficult, hedging can significantly improve your ability to do so. One hedging example would be the following. At the beginning of both the Fed speech and the banana phone presentation, you buy the banana stock and at the same time short the rest of the market. In red, we will showcase your PL, meaning the profit and losses curve without any hedge. In green, we added your new PL for the hedge trade. When the Fed announcement happens, the overall market and also the banana company declines. Since you shorted the market, your short position grows and offsets your losses on the banana stock. As you can see, the green curve stays almost constant. Now the banana company makes a weighted announcement. The banana stock rises, and since the banana stock is only a small part of the overall market, your short position falls way less. You made a profit and can now close both positions. To do so, you buy back the overall market to give back the borrowed shares from your short. Then you sell your banana shares to keep your profit. In this scenario, you've successfully isolated your desired exposure and your trade only depended on the phone's success and not the overall market movement. Another common hedging application involves avoiding currency risk in international markets. 
Imagine you're a trustworthy local businessman from the US and you seek higher interest rates on your savings of $100,000. You discover that in your US bank you get 5% interest rates, but a Swiss bank offers significantly higher returns of 20% on deposits in Swiss francs. To capitalize on this, you transfer your funds of $100,000 to a Swiss bank account to earn interest there. The current exchange rate for USD to Swiss francs is 0.9. Therefore, you will be able to deposit 90,000 Swiss francs. Over the course of one year, your position now accumulates 20% of interest on the 90,000 deposited Swiss francs. This results in a gain of 18,000 Swiss francs. Therefore, you now own 108,000 Swiss francs. Unfortunately, however, the exchange rate of USD to Swiss francs changed and is now 1.1. While previously one Swiss franc was worth more than one dollar, it is now the opposite. That means you kept your money in the currency that is worth less in relation and therefore lost money. But how much? If you convert it back, you have to divide 108,000 Swiss francs by 1.1 to obtain 98,181. This is of course less than you previously had, even though you made 20% interest on it. The reason for this is that the ratio of USD to Swiss francs also changed, namely by 22%, which is even more than the 20% interest you gained. In simpler terms, the fluctuations in the currency market hurt your trade. Of course, the change could have happened just as well in the opposite direction and you could have made even more money. But we didn't know in which direction the currencies will move and frankly we did not want to bet on that. Instead, we saw a good opportunity with the Swiss franc and want to isolate our edge here by hedging against the currency risk. The arbitrage video explored how the underlying basket of securities can be used to hedge exposure compared to an ETF position. It's important to remember that this is just one example. There are numerous other products you can leverage to hedge ETF exposure. This is true for many products and we will go through a few possibilities for the ETF to give you an overview. The easiest way to protect yourself against price movements in a product would be to use the same product itself. So if you're going long on ETF, just selling it would close your position and you would be neutral with regards to price movement. This requires you to cross the spread, but for example in market making, which we will explain later, it happens regularly that you just trade both sides of the same product and stay neutral on average through that. However, in many cases you can't really do this since you still want to have some position in a given asset. In our video about arbitrage, we already discussed hedging through the underlying as well. If we buy stocks and sell the ETF or vice versa, we can cancel out any price movements related to the assets. If the stocks go up, so will the ETF, and since your position goes in the opposite direction, you stay flat. On certain products, there may also exist futures. If this is the case, you can use a futures contract to offset risk when hedging. You can, for example, offset risk in a long ETF position by shorting a future tracking the same index. Here, you may have to be careful about cash flows such as dividends though. Note that all these previously mentioned examples hedge your exposure almost perfectly. Sometimes it may be worth the risk to trade a similar product in the other direction to hedge. For example, if you see that there are two different ETFs tracking related benchmarks and one is much more expensive than the other, potentially there's an opportunity there and you can hedge by using the other product. In reality, trading companies operate globally and make use of orders around the world. If you need to hedge a position that you opened in Europe, you might hedge it through a trade in Asia. This was the case for the Bitcoin arbitrage, for example. Using multiple markets, time zones and being open to different products is especially important since not all financial products trade 24-7. That means you may simply not be able to easily buy or sell the same product at different times. The examples we've explored so far focus on hedging specific risks to isolate other effects we're truly interested in trading. 
However, many market participants also use hedges as a kind of insurance product to protect themselves against extreme events with potentially large unforeseen movements, for example such as market crashes or consequences of unpredictable occurrences. These very extreme events are often known as black swan events and instruments like put options or long volatility instruments can be used for protection against them. The idea here is that you want to avoid losing too much of your capital as this would limit future gains. Depending on your strategy, it may be more efficient to constantly pay a small premium for insurance rather than taking the chance of jeopardizing your long-term profits. Hedging can be viewed in the context of your overall trading activity and there are many factors and risks that influence your performance but not do not contribute to your edge. To give a quick overview, let's go through a few examples. If you are expecting other participants to give you something in the future, you have counterparty credit risk. For example, if you lend money to a company by buying their bond, there is the risk that the company goes bankrupt and won't pay you back. Probably the most straightforward type of risk is directional risk. For example, if you buy any company stock, you will have directional risk exposure towards the stock price moving. Overall market movements impact your positions as well, which is called market risk. We saw this earlier in the banana phone company's trade. If you trade internationally, but measure your profit in one currency, you also have currency risk. This happened in the example of the Swiss bank trade. Certain instruments such as options are also sensitive to other exposures such as volatility, which is the variation in prices. Last but not least, interest rates may change and influence your position as well over time. This is especially relevant for bonds where pricing is closely connected to the risk-free rate. So in conclusion, hedging is a widely used and highly valuable strategy in the trading world. Here is its fundamental motivation. Firstly, it allows you to isolate your exposure. Secondly, it is an enabler of arbitrage. Thirdly, it allows you just in general to reduce your risk by mitigating and offsetting certain risks. Last but not the least, it allows you to increase your capital efficiency by reducing risk which allows you to use and lock up less capital for each individual trade. As a last takeaway, it's important to note that hedging often involves crossing a spread. Therefore, using highly liquid instruments is preferable as spreads tend to be tighter and executions are generally easier to achieve at any given time. This also once again highlights the need for liquidity providers and the value of tight bid-ask spreads.